Now, those of you that know me know that I am no advocate for Chip Kelly. I most certainly am not a fan. And I personally wouldn't want him anywhere near my NFL locker room. It's just that simple. Now, even though I wouldn't want him around my locker room, and I can't believe the San Francisco 49ers gave him the head coaching position like they did after what ended up being the disaster in Philadelphia that was, I do think it's important to point out that Chip Kelly was not a complete and total unmitigated disaster in Philadelphia in his three years as a head coach. You look at the first year, win the division, go to the playoffs. You know, it wasn't always bad. What happened, though, is he got too full of himself. He got onto a power trip, won a political battle in the front office against Howie Roseman, tricked Jeffrey, Jeffrey Lurie into giving him complete control of the 53-man roster and the draft room. And ultimately, that's when it became a disaster with Chip Kelly because Chip Kelly, the general manager, was a disaster. And he, ultimately, that led to Chip Kelly, the head football coach, being fired. Now, there's also some significant questions about whether his style and approach to offensive football really works at the NFL level. You know, always wanting to be up-tempo. You know, even if you're always going fast, eventually teams catch on and they figure it out. And the problem you run into is that you consistently run at the same speed. There's no variance. There's no change. To me, it's more effective if you vary your tempos. But if you always go super slow or you always go super fast, eventually professionals are going to adjust. They're in the positions they are, you would hope, for specific reasons. And when you look at it, if you don't have the explosive personnel on offense to be able to score a ton of points, you really put your defense behind the eight ball running the system that you do because you can go three and out and only hold the ball at a 40 or 50 second clip. So you're always going to be trailing the league in time of possession. You're always going to be struggling to whittle down the clock late in games. And you're going to wear out and burn out your defenses. So I still think there are significant questions about whether Chip Kelly and his approach, his system, his philosophy really works at the NFL level. And when you look at what the San Francisco 49ers have been this year, 2-13, and 13, it only further validates those concerns and questions. And as bad as the 49ers defense has been due to departures via retirement and poor drafting and what have you, uh, part of the problem is, is the offense sucks, so the offense gets off the field very quickly means the defense is on the field for longer than it needs to be, and you just create all types of problems. And you look at Chip Kelly, supposed to be this offensive guy. The offense most certainly did not get better, and again, as I just alluded to, because of what you do on the offensive side of the ball, and as bad as the offensive side of the ball was, the defense gets taxed, their lack of depth gets exposed, and their defense ends up playing worse. You know, and it's bad for 49er fans. I feel for 49er fans in a way, even though a lot of them are fucking bandwagon people from the 80s and 90s. You know, you could be once a bandwagon fan and end up really loving the team and you stick it with them. And that's what happens for a lot of these teams. Why do you think there's so many Cowboys fans and Steeler fans? It's because these were the teams that were great in the 70s and, you know, later on in the 90s and the 2000s and so on and so forth. The Packers as well. I can tell you from being in Illinois, growing up in Illinois, there are an awful lot more Packer fans once the mid-90s came and you had Brett Favre and Mike Holmgren and Reggie White there at Lambeau Field. You know, there weren't nearly that many Packer fans before the mid-90s. I promise you. I promise you. That's just the way it is. But you look at the 49ers and you go from a position where a few years ago you were one of the elite teams in the NFL. Not just the NFC, the NFL. You came this close to potentially winning a Super Bowl. You were making it to NFC Championship games. All that jazz. And now you're in a position where you still have a chance in the last week of the season to earn the number one overall pick in the 2017 draft. You know, so I can understand why 49er fans will be frustrated and calling for Chip Kelly's head, saying we, we ended up being a disaster in Philly at the end. This year sucked. Why do we think it's going to get any better? And I get that, and I understand it. You know, because the 49ers are terrible, and somebody needs to be held accountable. However, I need to point this out. The 49ers roster was god-awful. They weren't going to be much better with somebody else. That's for damn sure. I'll use the Belichick example. How many games do you really think Bill Belichick would win with this frickin' roster? Six? Maybe seven? Maybe? And who knows? Because at the end of the day, 
What would he do with a combination of Blaine Gabbard and Colin Kaepernick at quarterback? For all you know, a Bill Belichick-led 49ers team would be the same 2-13 and 13 that Chip Kelly's 49ers are. And if you fire Chip Kelly, now you're going into a position where you're on your third head coach at three years. Who's to say that a new head coach is going to do any better? Like, you couldn't wait to run Harbaugh out of town to promote Jim Tom Sula, who went, what, 5-11 and 11 last year. So you run him the hell out of town to bring in a guy who's now 2-13. and 13. You keep changing coaches and getting worse. What's the end game for the 49ers? Fire Chip Kelly, hire somebody else, and they go 0-16 next year, get the number one overall pick for sure in 2018? And why fire another head coach after one season? You know, granted, you can maybe speak to not making the bad decisions in the first place. There's something to be said about that. But once you make the decision, you've got to go with the decision because long term, who the hell would want to come coach for your team that's worth anything at all? If they don't think that you would be committed to them after you just fired two straight coaches after one season, who the hell worth any quality at all would want to coach for the San Francisco 49ers? The answer is nobody. So while it's easy to sit there and talk about Chip Kelly should be fired, and it's easy to knock Chip Kelly, and believe me, I'll continue to do plenty of that. The talk of firing him to me, in my opinion, you have hired him, you need to give him a fair chance. This talk of firing him is completely fucking ridiculous. And it misses the point of who really should be accountable for the disaster that are the 49ers. That would be the York family, but you can't necessarily just fire them. So you have to look at who you can fire to really help shake things up and change shit. And that's where we go to general manager Trent Balky. Balky's the one that needs to get fired. Because the reason the 49ers are as bad and as irrelevant as they are is because of Trent Balky. Years of mediocre drafting have finally caught up with this organization. They've been catching up with them for a couple of years. And I remember talking about it in 2012, 2013, 2014, is that they've had some bad drafts, and eventually this is going to catch up with them. And da -da 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 -da! guess what happened? It did. Look back at a period of drafts between 2010 and 2014, and look who's still left with the roster. 2010, the only person that's left is Navarro Bowman, and he just tore his Achilles tendon. 2011, Colin Kaepernick. That's it. 2012 was a complete fucking miss. There's no one from that draft class on their roster. And I'm not sure if any of them are even still in the NFL. And if they are, they don't matter. 2013, you've got Eric Reed and Vance McDonald, and that's it. 2014, Carlos Hyde, Marcus Martin, Aaron Lynch. Those are really your three guys from that draft class that matter. Jimmy Ward was the first round pick, but of course he doesn't matter. So you're talking about years of overvaluing defensive backs like Eric Reed, Jimmy Ward, and taking them too high in the draft. You're talking about years of gambling on guys with torn ACLs, the Lemonniers of the world, the Marcus Lattimores of the world, all of these mixed missed picks. At one point in time, the Niners had the luxury, maybe, to gamble on some of these guys and take chances, and that's what they did. But ultimately, if those picks don't pan out, then you really, really, really have set your organization behind the eight ball, and that's exactly what Trent Baalke did. Furthermore, on top of that, failing to replace free agents or keep free agents and failing to replace the players that retired. Now, granted, you can't control when somebody like Chris Borland's dumbass retires after one season because he all of a sudden figured that football could be dangerous after 15-some years of fucking playing the game. What a dipshit. You know, but you have to be prepared for guys like Patrick Willis retiring. Potentially maybe somebody like an Anthony Davis retiring. You don't know maybe it's coming, but you have to be prepared for these contingencies. But then you allow guys to leave in free agency. You know, and and for what reason I know not why. You let Michael Crabtree grow to pay big money to an inferior Tory Smith. Just why the fuck would you do that? Why? You let Frank Gore leave. For absolutely nothing. Now, granted, granted, you drafted Carlos Hyde in the second round, and he was viewed to be the long-term replacement, but you didn't have to let him go. And I always think of one move that really went under the radar. Ultimately, Vernon Davis is gone for nothing, but Delaney Walker was allowed to leave after the Super Bowl season for nothing, and Delaney Walker has been a godsend for the Tennessee Titans the past few years. That 49ers defense, offense would look a little bit better with Delaney Walker as their number one tight end. He would be their number one receiving target. 
But Trent Baalke did all this shit. Letting you potty go to the Cardinals in free agency and not ponying up the dough for him. That arrogance of believing that everything was just fine. That arrogance of believing that he knew what the hell he was doing because clearly at the end of the day he didn't. And then when you look at Trent Baalke and you talk about the way he conducted and carried himself, he was in such a hurry to fucking run Jim Harbaugh out of town. The same Jim Harbaugh that comes in and immediately makes the 49ers matter over the course of four years. You couldn't wait to fucking run Jim Harbaugh out of town. You couldn't wait to send his ass pack into Ann Arbor. Then to top it all off, you get the chance to hire an Adam Gase, who is clearly one of those hot candidates that's got his shit together. And that's why so many teams want a part of him. You've got the chance for him to be your head coach, but you stubbornly dig in your heels and say that he has to keep Jim Tom Sula on his staff as the defensive coordinator. Why in the fuck would you do that? Who the hell is Jim Tom Sula? Furthermore, what general manager with his weight of any fucking thing would sit there and dictate to the new head coach who he's got to keep on in terms of his fucking staff from a team on the decline? Why the hell would any quality new head coach want to come into this type of situation, this type of position? This fucking ridiculous. Jim Tom Sula, who wasn't even the defensive coordinator. And the one thing, if he sat there and said, hey, we can hire you, but you got to allow Vic Fangio to say, because we really like Vic because he's good at his job. He actually knows what the fuck he's doing. You ran Adam Gase out of fucking town and didn't get him to be your next head coach to replace Harbaugh when he fucking should have been because of your man love for Jim Tom Sula, who, oh, by the way, Trent Balky, ding dong, dumb dick, you ended up promoting your head coaching job to fire him one year later because you're a fucking moron. And then ultimately hiring Chip Kelly fresh off of the disaster of what he did to Philadelphia. Like, if you look at the resumes here, now some 49er fans are just going to say, fucking clean house, get rid of them all, and I get that. But if you had to choose one, whose resume in San Francisco is more worthy of termination? Chip Kelly's one bad year or Trent Baalke's several? I think the answer is quite apparent. If the 49ers are ever going to become a relevant organization again, which they need to be for the sake of the NFL with their large fan base, they need to get rid of Trent Baalke. You can't just get rid of the York family, unfortunately. But you can't get rid of Trent Baalke. There needs to be somebody in place in the football operations that actually knows what the hell they're doing that is going to sit there and be a beneficiary, or a be beneficial, excuse me, to the head coach. Not working against him. Not hiring one-year props and space fillers, but hiring guys that know what they do and know what they're doing. And then drafting like you know what the hell you're doing. Because Trent Baalke, more often than not, has drafted like he doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Yeah, the answer's simple. The 49ers should fire Trent Baalke, not Chip Kelly.